and welcome back to Spaced Out Radio's Cryptid Tales. My name is Amber Becker, and today we are going to be talking about the great alien reconnaissance of 1952. So there's a lot to dive into in this story, and uh, yeah, so let's get right into it. In 1952, there were multiple traffic control areas and several airports and air force bases that were all around Washington DC that reported seeing unidentified flying objects on their radar. So questioning local pilots and the air traffic controllers, they were told that they were there were a number of bright lights that had been seen in the sky. So the next week, it happened again. That's right, it happened all over again. And with time and time again, dozens and dozens of blips started appearing on the radar screens. Fighter jets were scrambled to intercept the unidentified flying objects, but could not match the speed of these aircrafts. The sightings were then added to the list of things to investigate by the United States government, and it was considered under the Project Blue Book, and nothing further has ever been told to us. So, let's just kind of deep dive into what this history actually means. All right, so it started at 11.40 p.m. on July 19th of 1952. A Edward Nugent, who was one of the air traffic controllers at the Reagan, um, Ronald Reagan International Airport had reported seeing seven unidentified flying blips on his radar screen. These objects were located 16 miles south southwest of the city, and no known aircrafts were in that area at the time. They weren't following any specific flight path, nothing was definitive. Nobody was answering a radio, nobody was identifying themselves. Nugent then told his superior that something was going on, who then came over and watched it on his screen. And he was later quoted saying this, we knew immediately that a very strange situation existed. Their movements were completely radical compared to those of ordinary aircrafts. So we've got erratic patterns, they're not following flight path, nobody's answering the radios, and it's all just a little fishy. But then aren't most UFO sightings? Of course, to be safe, they decided to check the working order of these radars and they were found to be perfectly normal. So there was no other explanation that maybe it was something wrong with the system itself. Therefore, they could not actually say for certain what those unidentified blips were. So then they decided to contact the aircraft or air national airports radar radar towers to which the two men there also confirmed that they also had unidentified blips on their radar system. But to top it off, they saw a bright shining light outside that took off with an incredible speed. So now we have blips and we have a bright light. Ex one of the aircraft um, radar people exclaiming, what the hell was that? So obviously everybody is on edge right now. Later on, they did track that these objects flew over the White House, they flew over uh, the United States Capitol building and a lot of other areas. They then called the Air Force Base, which was located 10 miles away from the National Airport and had it described as an orange ball of fire in the sky with a trailing tail. Now, to me, that just sounds like maybe it's a meteor that came into our system, but they don't just fly in erratic patterns. Those just kind of hit the earth and do what they need to do or burn up before they ever hit us. So why would this object have the ability to change direction and move around? That is all a very 
Very good question. Another man took off in a plane from the National Airport and he was able to track six objects as they flew through the sky, um, but not catch up to them. Again, could not catch them at all. Now at the Andrew Air Force Base, they were tracking these objects again on the radars at the same time as all of this was happening. And not all of them, but some of them, they were suspected and later apparently proved to be stars and meteors coming into our atmosphere. Now, what strikes me funny about this is that again, they don't have the ability to stop abruptly and change direction. Sorry, but unless there's something in there controlling it, it's not gonna happen. You can't just throw a star at our surface and have it stop halfway through the sky and turn around and change a direction. So I don't know if I agree with the meteor lights and stars. At about 3 a.m. Shortly thereafter, two U.S. Air Force fighter jets showed up over Washington and the objects abruptly stopped. Disappeared without a trace. Nowhere to be seen, no evidence left that anything had ever happened. Then we move to the next weekend. So July 26th to 27th. At 8.15, PM, a pilot and a stewardess on one of the National Airport flights reported seeing strange lights above their aircraft. Now these lights were unlike anything they had ever seen before, exclaiming that they were not stars nor shooting stars as they didn't have tails and they moved faster than any shooting star they had ever seen. To me, I would take the credibility over a pilot or a stewardess because they spend so much of their job in the sky and near those shooting stars. I've been fortunate enough to see things like the Northern Lights up close and personal in a plane. So of course they're gonna see what the sky does at night and know what shooting stars look like, know what meteors look like. And for them to say that it was not like anything they had ever seen, just kind of adds a little bit more credibility to what was happening at the time. Meanwhile, as this was happening, a member of Project Blue Book showed up and demanded that he be able to take pictures of the radar screens to show the unidentified flying objects on the screen as they were still popping up as little blip. By this time, 9.30 p.m., so about 40, well, an hour and, yeah, about an hour later, they, were then picking up objects in every single sector on the screen, which is a little fishy because again, more objects are appearing all of a sudden while the Project Blue Book person is there and waiting to be able to take pictures of their screens. So that means, guess what he got to see? That's right, all of those little blips start popping up. Now, at times the objects traveled slowly and then they just started to randomly increase and decrease whenever they felt like it. They were actually clocked up to speeds of about 7,000 miles per hour and it was just starting to get a little much. So at, uh, at 11.30 p.m. the U.S. Air Force set out another fighter jet from the Newcastle Air Force Base. When they turned the fighter jet towards where these unidentified blips were coming from, nothing was there. So as soon as they start getting close, it seems that they just poof. So that being said, uh, after midnight on July 27th, the Air Force major that was Project Blue Book's liaison at the Pentagon arrived to monitor the radars overnight just to see if anything happened again. Well, they got a phone call from the weather station saying that there was a weird weather sensitivity over the city, but it was not enough to cause weather phenomenon or any anomalies that they should be aware of that would be picked up on their radars. So we've now ruled out weather. We have now ruled out actual aircrafts and more and more people are starting to see them. To me, that sounds like a pretty exciting adventure and I can't wait to see what we come up with next because there's a lot of information to dive into here. 
Now, of course, for the rest of the night of the 27th of July, aircrafts flying in and out of the airport, as well as Air Force aircrafts stationed around the city, were seeing unidentified lights in the sky that disappeared when they got close, were taking off and moving throughout the atmosphere. Since then, it hasn't happened that we know of or anybody has said, and it's still a mystery to everybody in the world. Now, of course, the White House had concerns that maybe it was an attack on the United States. Um, it gained a lot of traction in the media, of course, and it just spurred a lot of conversation about whether or not aliens really do exist and whether or not they are plotting to attack the United States or Earth as a whole in the future. Now, of course, like anything, they have tried to ex they have tried to explain everything through and through and through and just say that it was a weather anomaly or it was just simply people seeing things, but nobody really buys that at all. Um, to have actually really put it into thought and had a Project Blue Book investigation launched on it and everything else, it just makes it a little more complicated than, eh, it was a weather anomaly, so we'll just forget about it. But that being said, there's a lot to talk about with this. So my question we're, for all of you, really, is A, have you watched the show Project Blue Book? Because that is a show now and the 10th episode actually does cover the 1952 um, reconnaissance of alien life. And uh, I'm interested. I don't have television. I mean, I have a television. I just don't have cable. So I have not seen Project Blue Book, but I would love to know more. So here's my question. Were you guys around? Were any of our viewers around or know somebody who was around in that time frame in Washington who may have seen these lights in the sky? Because civilians were reporting all of these weird things too. Not just Air Force and government and personnel. So what was it? Were aliens actually trying to scope out the capital of the United States and uh, figure out how to infiltrate the White House, or was it just a weird coincidence? I guess we'll really never know, and while aliens aren't my specialty, I'm sure that there are plenty of wonderful shows that you can go back and watch here on YouTube and listen to Dave dive into Project Blue Book and multitudes of other alien and UFO sightings. That is it. Let me know what you guys think. Did you ever have um, interest in aliens? Was this the story that got you on the alien bandwagon? Or was there something else that you really, really liked that got you interested in it? Let me know down below in the comments. Of course, a huge shout out to Ron Bubblefoot Thal for supplying us with all of the music for Spaced Out Radio. And of course, at the end of the day, don't forget to sign up to our Space Travelers Club where you can get tons of cool exclusives and follow us on all of our social media, mine and all of Spaced Out Radios, for lots of other cool and exciting things. I will catch you guys in the next episode.